kind of give a kind of state of the state or what's new in your in, in your uh, state and so uh, I'm gonna do that but uh, as most of you know I had a small problem with the logo didn't like the way that bear was looking at Alaska so I'm not a not a uh, PowerPoint expert but I tried to redo it for you so it looks a little looks a little better uh, and this uh, this gives me a chance to brag a little bit and a chance just to point out, you know, Alaska is, uh, is a very, very expansive state. Um, you can see here Charleston, South Carolina to San Francisco. If the uh, map was positioned a little better, you, it would show that um, Alaska can touch the shores of the Great Lakes and the Rio Grande, Rio Grande, Rio Grande. Uh, touches, you know, all, all four corners of the continental United States. So. Anyhow, this, uh, the, the, just the sheer expanse and, and, the, and the remoteness of it just presents us with a bunch of um, problems and issues that, that we have to deal with every day that, that are a little different than maybe what you guys deal with. So uh, I work for the Alaska DOT and PF, Transportation and Public Facilities. Um, I think we just squeak you guys out in Nevada for uh, miles and lane miles. Um, we do. Uh, have a marine highway system that we operate and um, uh, again public facilities and then the um, kind of unusual part for us again is we have 247 airports and most of them are remote small airstrips small uh, uh, not international airports Mo uh, about half of them aren't cert certificated so it's a little different than um, than what you folks do so Again, I work for the state equipment fleet. Um, we are one of those states that Henry was referring to that uh, takes care of not just the DOT fleet, but also the, uh, the light duty fleet and the heavy duty fleet for, um, for the entire, all executive branch agencies. We do, uh, we buy, or we, we uh, the university system uses our contracts as well, uh, but we don't really do any maintenance for them, so we have, 160 people, we have 53 shops around the state, and you can see the numbers there for, uh, for uh, you know, the different, different classes of equipment. Um, and again, we're, we are, uh, we do it for everyone, but um, 85, and that's probably, it's even higher than that, of uh, SEF, state equipment fleet, 85% 80, of our business is DOT equipment and, and vehicles, so. Um, and just kind of an example, we do fire trucks, we've, that's a, uh, tow plow outside the shop and then it's a new guardrail mower that um, we're just uh, experimenting is not the word but we're just uh, learning to use these days and then of course everybody knows or most everybody knows about the Alaska State Troopers so they're uh, other than DOT that's probably our biggest um, customer so to speak and of course uh, you know snow and ice is our is our big deal just like everybody here so there's a look at a, um, what our uh, bread and butter plow truck looks like and, and a blower. And then an example there, uh, as I was saying about rural airports, you can see that airstrip in the bottom is uh, there's, <laughs> there's nothing there but an airstrip. And there are no roads that, uh, that uh, lead to, that connect that, that airstrip with the, with the highway system. So everything that goes there either has to go by air or by, by boat. And the boats don't don't run for about six or seven months out of the year. Challenges we have, uh, the, the, uh, the state of Alaska is 90% uh, funded by uh, oil and oil and gas exploration and extraction. Um, as everybody knows in the last several years that has taken a tumble, taken a uh, dive, taken whatever, you, however you want to say it. Um, DOT's, their uh, general fund budget has 25% um, cut in, in, in general fund money, which is a direct hit to the maintenance and operations folks. That's where it always ends up coming from. Uh, con construction projects still seem to be rolling in, but um, the, uh, the maintenance side taking a big chunk. And the fleet is, uh, we are an inter internal service fund uh, we don't get any um, direct general fund funding from the legislature or the governor's budget. All of, all of our funds come from chargeback rates for our equipment. And so our uh, 
I mean, we, we operate on that revenue um, all the time. Uh, but the legislature does control and pinch and, uh, you know, politically, um, this is, uh, make, make, make statements with, with budget figures that, that don't, you know, that don't make a lot of sense. We've kind of heard about this um, all this week. <laughs> What's my name? I'm uh, Pete. <laughs> Pete the Pirate from, uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, they, they play games like that. So, uh, again, you know, we uh, generate our own revenue for both operating and the replacement of the equipment. But our capital spending authority controlled by the legislature, it's been flat for 13 straight years. And then last year it was cut by 20%. So we are uh, struggling, you know, with that, with being able to replace things that, uh, that, that are worn out, or that are uh, ready to be replaced. We don't have any, uh, we, we, would have loved, we would love to um, participate in a buyback pro program like that, but uh, the freight cost of getting our stuff where it, where it needs to go just kind of makes it, to, you know, takes out and the lack of vendors we we only have one vendor per brand in in alaska oil drives the bus in alaska and just I threw that picture up there that is a, a a herd of uh caribou running right next to a oil platform uh they do exist in the same space uh quite well just for uh let's see now i'm back in the good graces of the legislature so, and, and again, um, same staffing and, and recruitment issues that, that, uh, that everybody faces. We have positions in, in rural Alaska and Bush, Alaska, that, where it's, it's been two years since we've uh, been able to hire somebody it, in, in, a, in a small Alaska town or village, and, and there just isn't qualified people that are there. And, and anybody from any of the bigger cities just is not going to move there to live there. And we pay them a differential, you know, a, a geographic differential, but it's... It's really not enough. So we've had quite a bit of that, and then we've had quite a bit of turnover um, in the fleet management side. Um, my position um, and two of the other um, senior district managers um, in the past nine months have turned over, and it's about a, a hundred years worth of fleet Alaska fleet experience that is just gone from our from our knowledge base. So um, some of the things that 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 we uh, run into there. And then again, our, we um, face logistical challenges. 80% of the communities, in, including most of those airports that we were talking about, they're off the road system. Um, it, most of them you can access with a barge or, or a boat during the summertime. So for instance, right now it's October. Um, there won't be another boat, there won't be another barge to Nome or Kotzebue until uh, about the middle of May. So whatever you're gonna, whatever you're going to ship there, whether it's a car or a truck or a piece of equipment, or if it's a drum of oil or a, um, you know, a, a part or fuel or whatever, if it's not there already, you are putting it in a plane and flying it there. And so everybody knows how expensive, uh, expensive that gets. Um, and it, because of that, it can take 18 months to two years, and that's not from PO to delivery. Um, that's from Delivery in Anchorage, which is the main port, to delivering to finally deploying that piece of equipment wherever it needs to go. We have some some things that uh, take a while. So here's a just kind of an example. Like I, like it says there, this is a regular work day. That's our me mechanic. He uh, he lives in Anchorage and, and and works in Bethel. This is this is kind of a kind of a regular deal for us. He's a week on week off guy. Um, goes to Bethel, goes to work for a week, but then as soon as he gets to Bethel, he uh, takes off on a commercial plane to Antioch, which is the one real close there, and then he jumps in this little charter um, with a windshield and a couple of bags of tools because the, wind, the windshield's busted out of the grater in sleep mute. So um, guys like this, we have them in the air like that about 100 days a year, about five or six of them. Like I said, that, that is... Uh, that, that's that's just regular routine for them. Obviously expensive, <laughs> obviously dangerous flying in Bush, Alaska. We have, we have not as yet lost one, so um, or had any crashes that were anything more than 
you know, you know, scuffed up fingers. But uh, um, we do that all the time. We do that all, all through that area, and it's mostly, you know, because there just there is no other access. And there's an airport there. The grader maintains the runway. If you can't maintain the runway, you can't have the airport open. And then there's no transportation in or out. Oh, so anti-active sleep mute is probably 1500 bucks our guy will uh our guy will <laughs> oh it gets better believe me <laughs> so th this is a little about 1500 dollars, or it might be a little less because that's that's one of the shorter ones but he will fly in there it's only about an hour or less and then most of the time we will pay the pilot to sit on the ground while we do the repairs and uh and then uh he'll fly him out because in sleep mute there is no public facing uh open to the public uh grocery store there is no uh hotel there is no i mean it's a very small community and so and, and they're all over alaska like that so yeah a average work day <laughs> 50 miles in the air 1500 bucks and 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 whatever we're doing comes into play when we're getting equipment there too. We're, we've had, uh, we cannot, we've not been able to get things on barges. And so we end up tearing apart brand new equipment and stuffing it in the back of a C-130 in order to get there. So this is Lake Minchumina, and I did have to verify the pronunciation of that myself. I didn't know what it was, but you can see it's, uh, you know, it's right in the middle of the state. So this flight, um, that's a brand new John Deere grader. Uh, take the take the plow off, take the cab off, and uh, stuff it in a plane, and fly it 200 miles. And the bill on that was uh, 65 thousand dollars. And now this is not an, a regular work day. This is not something we we try to avoid that at all costs. But it happens, you know. Um, there's a, we have another one, and I don't have it on a slide here. I, have, I do have another one, but. Uh, the little town of Squentna is only 50 miles away from Anchorage. And so 50 miles away from Bethel, you know, is, is a small plane. But 50 miles away from Anchorage, you should be able to drive there. And, and this happens to be due west where um, you would cross two rivers and, and there are no roads. So they have an airport there. Uh, and they had a 1980s version champ grader that uh, was being replaced. And we um, uh, bought the grader, came to Anchorage. Uh, and the, the river, the, the water was too low to, for a barge to get up the river to uh, Squintna. And that was in 2015. <laughs> and so then in 2016, so we, we sent that grader somewhere else and ordered another one because we knew it was going to be nine months before we would even be able to try Squintna again. 2016, uh, barge company said it's still, the water's still too low. We're not taking your grader up there. And so in fall of 2016 we put one of those graders in, and it's it's quite a task to you know just pull that thing apart it's brand new stuff it in there and then pay somebody to go out there and reassemble it and that 50 mile trip that's 50 miles in the air and if you think the size of the, you know the size of that plane i'm pretty sure they probably had to fly past it just to get the the uh altitude to be able to turn the thing you know and 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 land and so that that was sixty thousand bucks and then, and then the worst part is the runway is not long enough for them to take off with a grater in the belly because it's too heavy. So our old grater is still there. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we're waiting for that barge to float it out. So some of the stuff that we kind of deal with on a regular basis. Just, this is just another example. example. Ambler is up way up in the corner of the state there. And... Uh, it's a, it, this is another one. This is a, a John Deere a dozer. Take off the tracks, take off the blade, take off the cab, stuff it all on the plane, fly it out there. And I don't, I, I don't think this one's even done yet, so I don't know what the bill is on that one. So. New stuff we have going on. We're, not, we're uh, behind the times a little bit. We have um, that, uh, showing a picture of that front mount wing, which is the very first one uh, that we have been deploying or that we have put in service and um, it actually was delivered uh, last month, so this will be the first winter that we actually work with a front mount wing. Looks like what they use at NASCAR to dry the, dry the track after it rains, and that's almost exactly what it is, and we're using that to clear light, very cold, light, dry snow off of uh, airport runways. 
on the scan tour, the, the sander guards that he had uh, built up to protect those chutes from being ran over in the back. What else is new in, in Alaska? Changing weather. This is, speaking of changing weather, this is what we're used to for, you know, in Fairbanks. Uh, and, you know, 49 below, uh, when, when, when it's 25 or 30 below for a long period of time, it's dry as can be. There's no moisture in the air. Everything is just, just dry as can be. And presents, you know, as, as everybody here knows, it's a different task to move dry, fluffy snow or dry granul granulated snow than it is wet, heavy snow. Again, we're used to very cold and in Fairbanks in particular. And then uh, what we've been having, they've had ice storms and freezing rain in Fairbanks for the last uh, like four or five winters in a row. And it, what, it, what it has created for us is uh, road conditions that we're, we are not very prepared for to address. And so we've had Alaska's very much, I won't say behind the times, but we are new to the brine uh, game, the, the salt and the pre-treating uh, pre of, the, of the roads, um, something that we've just started in the last I'd say five or six years, but then we also end up with equipment like this. Uh, this is a icebreaker, a junior, junior, junior snow lion. I guess you could, you could say. And so we have started uh, experimenting with with different things there, different types of equipment to combat. We, you know, we had really no way to break up that ice, and in in Fairbanks, it was it was there, and the public just was not prepared for it. We were not prepared for it, and we just weren't prepared to. To address it, and then this other picture is another example of changing weather conditions. That you guys can Google off ice. That's not a typo. That's a name of a weather phenomenon. To where the the temperature in that picture, it's 30 below, and there's open water, is on the Dalton Highway, which for uh, Dalton Highway is between Fairbanks and Prudhoe Bay, and uh, again, Prudhoe Bay is where we get all our government funding. So we call it the road to the bank. So. It, uh, it's important to us and it flooded. You can see there, it's very, very flat. That river runs alongside the road. It normally freezes all the way through and for some reason it froze all the way through down, down at the mouth of the river but did not freeze all the way through uh, where it ran through the road. And so we had the road to the bank closed because it's 20 below and open water running over the, running over the water for about two weeks it took to, uh, to clear that up weather conditions and things that we are um you know have not have not seen before and and not prepared for so we're uh, addressing them you know meeting challenges head on with um you know with the equipment we have and then looking at the, you know the new things that that we see here so that's kind of what is up in alaska so I always remember Brad told a class story in the past where there's a piece of equipment out of one of these airports. And so they fly in and the equipment is not there. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so the locals had decided they were going to use it uh, for their needs. So if you look at, what was one of those first ones that I showed you, you can see that there's a, this is the airstrip and this is a tiny little airport building right here. Thank you. And then uh, this is the small town here. And, and the state, Alaska, is responsible for the airstrip and the, uh, you know, just, just the, the apron or whatever you want to call it. But all of these airports are operated by non-state employees. They're just locals. They're just, we contract with the local there. And uh, if their stuff gets stuck in the mud, then they just come grab the state equipment and head down the road. and. Sometimes when you get there, it's there, and sometimes it's not, and sometimes it's out of fuel, and all the fuel is being burned in town, and that's just kind of the way it goes. The preceding video was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found at tsp2.org. That's tsp2.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.